Upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I am Bishop Basil Edwards. I invite you to join us right here on Tobago Inspirational Network every Sunday evening at 4 p.m. for the program Standing on the Rock. Together we will journey through the scriptures to have a better understanding of the Holy Word of God. Standing on the Rock every Sunday 4 p.m. on Tobago Inspirational Network. Amen. Today we want to thank God for another program like this. Understanding even in this time that we are living in is to give God thanks and praise. We know in our cities, in our town, we have so much different challenges. And we have to thank God that when he's ready to do a cleanup, he will do a cleanup. In cities, we have people who believe that they're in, control, that they're in charge of our cities. And then, therefore, there is a subject here that I really want to deal with. Who then is Simon the sorcerer? And then we understand Simon the sorcerer lived in, the day of, in that day and time that because of the, um, the Samaritans, he was there now to help them in their distress, their problem, but not in a positive way, but in a negative way. So today I will read a little story here about him, and then I will continue sharing with you what, I, what my thought is and with what different decisions you can make to help you to become a better person. The Bible said in, in Acts chapter 8 and verse 9, there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery and the bewitching the, bewitched the people of Samaria, giving all that himself was some great one, to whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest, saying, This is the great power of God. And to him they had regard because that of a long time he had bewitched them with sorcery. <clears throat> but when they believed Philip preaching the, the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they will baptize both men and women. Then Simon himself believed also, and when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracle and sign which were done. I stopped there for today because I really wanted to share with us where we are, who we are, and the purpose and the reason why we have so much different challenges in the world today. Now, the Bible tells us in Acts chapter 6, if you read that, you will find this Philip or one of them that were anointed, filled with the Holy Ghost, to be able to feed the widows and those that were in that their time in Acts. When the apostles said, we will give ourselves continuing to the word of God, the preaching of the word of God and fasting, while Philip and Stephen and Patrick and about seven of them was given the responsibility, not, to, not that the widows will be neglected, but that they will be fed. And it become a time when the, when the entire body were under stress. They were persecuted. How? Nero was the one who was in charge at that time, the emperor. And Nero did not make it easy for the children of Israel at that time or for the church at the start of that church. Nero made sure that they were much, 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 in that sense, much persecution. Nero killing people from left, right, and center. He was destroying them. He was putting them on, on poles and wooden cross. He was leaving them for the lion to kill them. He was burning them alive while he naked and driving around in his chariot and laughing. That's a madman. <clears throat> but the Bible tells us, with all of that, God would have been able to judge Nero. Nero died as a as, as one in a, in a bittersweet position because of the, the kind of persecution he allowed the children of God to go through. But here the Bible tells us, even in Samaria, Samaria is a wonderful, well-to-do Christian. 
And not only that, the Samaritans were, were half Jews. They are actually half Jews. So they have Jewish um, um, light in them. They have Jewish um, offspring in them. It's like, a, it's like a dugla between a Negro and an Indian or a white woman and a black man or a black man or a, a white man and a black woman. So we see them as that they are half Jew, meaning that other nation goes into them, into the Jewish people, and they make the Samaritans. So what would have happened now? They were engaged and they were, they were vulnerable to a lot of things that would have created such problem in their life. And this was a place where they were vulnerable. Why? In that day and time, here is a young man. Here is a man who tells them, I know what I can do to help you through your situation. What it is about is that he is a witch. He is a witch. He is a soothsayer. In a matter of fact, he's an obia man. He's a witchcraft. He's a witch. He's a man of a witch. And therefore, the Bible says, he actually subdued them with sorcery. An entire village or city it's been locked down by a man by Simon the sorcerer. Can we say we say Tobago is like that? No. I will not engage in saying Tobago is locked down with sorcerer. What I'm saying about Tobago is that we, we have too much a superstitious belief because everything that knocks our door is zombie. <clears throat> but here is a man, you don't have to knock his door. He's responsible for babies, meaning that if you can't make a child because of his sorcery, he may have you barren or make you feel as though you're barren. He had many different things he could have done to make the people remain in poverty. And for that, they say he was the great power of God until Philip showed up. <clears throat> so there are situations where we as children of God need to show up in a, in a place where there is not positiveness, but there is negativeness. We need to show up in these areas. In Tobago, we become too vulnerable. We become too, too attached to things or we take things for granted and say, let them kill themselves out. No! The guns have to stop. And the people who are involved in these guns um, arrival must stop, must bring it to naught, must destroy it. Tobago is too small. Too many from Trinidad people are coming from Trinidad and right in Tobago here who are practicing how to rob, how to kill. They are hired killers. We need to pray. <clears throat> and Tobagoans are so friendly. Everybody that comes from Trinidad will believe they are okay. They are right in our backyard. Our own children it become our monsters because when they smoke the stupidness like the coke or they smoke the, 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 the marijuana that is, that is called the kush, they become mad. <clears throat> They're more mad than sin because when you smoke the kush and you drink your, your punching or you drink your white rum, you're crazy. You will do something to somebody and it will not affect you because your, your heart is numb. Simon numb everybody in Samaria. The prostitutes was wild. The homosexuals were wild. The lesbians were wild. And not only that, sexual perversion through fornication, they were wild. Why? Because a man had them in bewitchment. Just imagine you can make a decision for yourself because a man have you in bewitchment. But thank God he does not allow his people to suffer even though they don't know him. He must send a deliverer. And the Bible tells us that Philip went down to Samaria. Are you hearing me somebody? He went down to Samaria in verse 9 said, but there was a certain man called Simon which be before time in the same city used sorcery and bewitch the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was some great one to whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest. And hear the words, this man is a great power of God. They couldn't 
see the truth from the falls because they are blind. And it's the same thing in our countries today. People are taken for granted. They respect the Obia men and the Obia women in our country of Tobago. Tobago people are too superstitious. We respect these men. We want to go by this one who will tell you foolishness and tell you foolishness and you will accept it. You prefer people throw water upon you and beat you with a fixed broom and do you all kind of wickedness, bathe you in the river, bathe you in the sea and you will agree for that because you believe in too much of Obia and too much of superstitiousness. Time for the big old man to get up and pray. We need to pray. We were a praying people in the 60s, in the 70s, in the 80s, in the 90s, in the 40s, in the 30s. But now we have changed. <clears throat> in my days, things were rough. We had a tote wood. We had a fetch bamboo. Dirt heaven. Fireside wood and fireside stove. That's what we know as a little boy growing up. You understand me? Before your head or two. And these are the things that you people used to do a long time with the rum and the sweet water and all kind of foolishness. And say so they're calling their ancestral. Do you know that when a man dies, his thoughts perish? That is not your mother nor your father. That's a familiar spirit that impersonates them. Why can't we grow up as Tobago men and get out of the foolish um, thing? We know that there are people who practice Obia, but they cannot be more than God. Just like how Simon is one man, but he could not have been more than Philip. The people said that he is a great power of God. To him, verse 11, to him they gave heed, regard, because that of long time he bewitched them with sorcery. That is in Acts chapter 8 from verse 9. I just read verse 11 there. So he bewitched them with sorcery for a long time, many years. So we get people in the city walking like zombie, like zombie. Who knows how much of them he would have sex, how many of them he have as, he, as his wives and concubines. So he's in control. It's not the same thing once that happened in Tobago. I remember a lady gave me a story. And it hurts me. She said, this man walked across the street and said, I want to show you something, lady. And she said, what it is? He said, can I show you that I will make that woman leave from the cross the road and came across here and where she stand by us there. And she will start to laugh as though she crazy. She said, the woman did that. He said, and I will teach you something again. I will let her go into the middle of the road and stand up there. And she can't move from there until I release her. And she stand there and watch the man did that. And she go into the middle of the road and stand up. They can't move. What is happening to Bego? People are bewitching people for sexual perversion. People are bewitching people, taking away their husband and taking away their wife from each other. People are bewitching people in Tobago. You have to be careful who you eat from, who you drink from, who you smoke from, because they're out to get you, especially if you're a beautiful woman or you're a handsome man. Somebody called me on the phone. And I'm going to make this open. I'm going to tell you who's the name of the person. But I'm telling you this. This is where it's terrible in Tobago. And she, the person called me on the phone. And he said, somebody give me their number. And I said, okay. She said, can you please tell me how to tie a man? And she continued to tell me why she wanted to tie him. She wanted to tie him. Not tie him up with string. But she wanted to tie the man. So the man will be a baby home. So the man will be a stupidy home. So the man will come home from work and sit down in the house and she doing what she want. I say, why? Because the first man leaves she. Why you have to tie a man for a man to stay home? So when the thing not working anymore, it's not killing or kill you? Because you make him stupid. I remember one time a lady gave me a story and I know I was in a particular place and while I was there, and the woman tell me, I used to have a hard time with a particular lady. And she said, something is going on with you. And that woman, I said, what it is? I said, I know. I said, I am a child of God. And she gave me information. She said, I was watching sometime and recognizing there are women who are reading books, how to charm men. 
Why you have to read a book how to charm a man? Why can't you look for a man for yourself and marry him? Why you want Tom, Dick and Harry? Listen to me, God is going to judge you. In my days in growing up, my mother begged me not to take anything from a particular gentleman in like a I was a young 11-year-old boy going to change my father's animals. And because of where he lived, he had plenty of cane and plenty of things. So I used to go and ask him for cane and things like that. And one day he called me, he said, see the boy? I said, yes, sir. Because I used to sit down and lie with him, not knowing the man had evilish thoughts, not knowing that the man is an obia man. I didn't know that. <clears throat> and while I did lie with him, <clears throat> he said, see the boy. He said, any young girl your age you want in like it all, just bring a kerchief and give it to me, and you will have them for life. I was afraid when he told me, I go and say, Mommy, so and so tell me if I want any girl in like it all, just bring a kerchief and give him, and he that belongs to me for life. I said, Mommy, what do you mean by that? He said, Don't ever go back by him again. She said, Don't ever pass that village, that place again. And she explained to me what he mean. He said, this man is an obia man. He said, and if this man is telling that, he, it means that he's going to be damaging the young girls. You're going to have women that you can't control. You understand me? So then I know you have people in villages, in cities, that bewitch people through witchcraft, through obia, through, through um, soothsaying. Are you hearing me, somebody? They have people in villages that are just there reading books, reading your hand palms, bathing you, putting one that stink thing on you that is called Padanga water. If you want a bath, go to your bathroom and bathe. Not let no man bathe you as a man. Not let no woman bathe you as a man. Next thing you know in the water, all they have been there doing things what they're supposed to do. Who oh, man had the audacity to obey me as an ex man? But by the way, let me get this story now. I used to mind sheep where I live. But where the sheep used to be is down in the gully down there. So sometimes when they get away, it's pressure for me to get them. Sometimes I'm going to go and get them to bring them back home. One evening, like they wanted water, so they're going to go down by this, the river. And I decided to go down to look for them to bring them home. And while I'm there, when I pass into the bush like twilight, twilight, I recognize I heard a fall make a noise by the bank. But I hear in water, splashing in water, where you can make out thing because night and fully come in. It's a next man bathing a man in the river. So I pass and bend the corner like I don't see. But I know they're there. And go and people around the corner to see what the man did. The man cut the fowl neck and take off the neck. Right, he ring it off, he cut it off and start to beat the next man that he bathed in water with the fowl. That is happening in Tobago. That is to tell you the superstitiousness that Tobago did have. I'll give you another story too. I want us to be aware because they're in our space. They live around us with a foolish behavioral pattern. And the story goes like this. I recognized that there was an old board house not too far from a particular place I was doing some work. And this two men come. One was a, one was a polit, um, particular um, a man who is a, is a spiritual man, I believe. And he came with a crater egg. Why? He tied up himself. You could know what religion he's from. And he pointed the house and tell the man, look, the jumbie there. And that man take out some eggs and start to Lego eggs on the, the building. All up to date, the extends are still there. You cannot pelt a spirit with eggs. If spirit want to come in your house, they could pass through the wall and come to you because they are spirits. And all these kind of foolish behavior to beg on ends get because we are too superstitious. If we get down and pray, 
If you start a prayer as God will have access to prayer, Tobago will be changed up. Don't come with all them foolish things that we have here. The licensing officers come to Tobago, they're doing the work. I, I believe some of them must overdo it. But they are here to do their work and foolishness all up in the country and the cow head and goat head and all kind of doatishness. That can't do nothing to them. Because if you have praying people among them, you might be, you might be a dead person. Let's stop the foolishness in Tobago, no man. Let's get back to our roots, no man. Let's get back to a place of praying and seeking God, no man. Even in the homes, you have Christians and they have things in their house showing that they are worshipping devils. Stop it. You have things in our homes and saying it is Jesus. Then Jesus, take it down and throw it away. Are you hearing me? Take it down and throw it away until Jesus reveal himself to you. That is Jesus. But the kind of pictures and mirror we have on our wall, we have black Jesus, we have white Jesus. We have, what kind of Jesus is that? It must just be so... It must just feel so bad to know how many of me Jesus he get. There is only one Jesus. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Jesus means the anointed one. Christ means the anointed one. He is God's man, servants. So the Bible tells us in verse 12, but when they believe Philip, that's what I like about it. You see, the gospel is truth. The gospel come to sustain you and to strengthen you and to deliver you and to take you through a place of separation unto God that is called sanctification. What the Christian needs to do is to live a sanctified life and stop hopping from church to church. Go to the church that you know you can serve God the way is stop hopping from church to church you go to a church you don't like when the preacher say you're gone but let me say this to you when you come judgment day God is going to deal with you we need Philip's a Philip the same spirit like Philip in our congregation, in our houses, in our home in our city, Philip is called a Philip the evangelist it's time for us to spread the gospel and stop gossiping. What is going on with us as the body of Christ? It just hurt me to see how we behave. You understand me? He said, but when Philip preached the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they will baptize both men and women. So what happened? Philip came with the gospel, which is good news, but the gospel was literally based upon the kingdom of heaven is at hand. God who lives in the, in the third heavens, the Bible tells us because he's a king, he has a kingdom, and so his kingdom is established in the earth. So that's why he's here to save the lives of men. We need to have it right. We need to have it right. Are you hearing me, somebody, today? So Philip, ways of bringing the people of Samaritan back to God is to preach about the kingdom of God because it is closer than we think. Men and women in Tobago is too superstitious. We need to get off that train and get the things of God. Before you tell anybody another thing they're telling you about is John B. Is that we know it has spirits. But let's have the reality. If we start praying and seeking the Lord, things will be different. Amen, somebody? So today I want to let you know that my topic is get back to God before it's too late. That is my topic. Get back to God before it's too late. On my closing statement, I also want to congratulate you husbands and wife, you beautiful and handsome husband who cherish your wife. This morning, I get up, I wanted to make sure, I hug my wife, I kiss my wife and I say, thank you. I said, if there is anything between us that causes us to go apart for the week, forgive me. You hear what I'm saying to you? We need to apologize to our wives, to our children, to our dear friends, Brother Kwashi. I will check you today. 
We need to show appreciation to our families because they are more important than anything else. I love my wife, Agatha Dillon Edwards. She's the most beautiful woman in the entire world. That's my world. That's not your world. You out there who have your wife and your husband, you have not been telling them how much you love them. This is the time you need to tell them that. Okay? So my love for you. So Father, today... I thank you for these wonderful, precious people who continue to listen to what I have to offer them. In our household, every pictures we have there that look like Jesus is an idol. I command you in the name of Jesus that your powers has been broken in our homes and that Christ will be redeemed. Christ will be lifted up. Christ will be magnified and your home will be a different. We don't have to be afraid of the bandits in our society because God is in control. Today, I want to thank God for you wonderful people who continue to support the program. Of course, I know the Lord loves you and the Lord appreciates you. Yes, Brother Koshi. Yes, Brother um, Bill. And so many different people that support the program. May you have a blessed, wonderful Sunday evening as you sit down to listen. And may I say to you, I will continue to pray for all of you because you are my friend. When you, when, when you go up, I also go up with you. When you come down, I'm also down with you to make sure that I encourage you going forward for this great venture that we are involved in. Jesus, we praise. Amen. Have a blessed afternoon in Jesus' name. Amen. I see Upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I am Bishop Basil Edwards. Invite you to join us right here on Tobago Inspirational Network every Sunday evening at 4 p.m. for the program Standing on the Rock. Together we will journey through the scriptures to have a better understanding of the Holy Word of God. Standing on the Rock every Sunday 4 p.m. on Tobago Inspirational Network